Yes, we are live. All right. What is good? Good evening. Welcome to the well. Welcome to the well. Good evening, Tommy. How are you? Hey, those of you joining on Instagram. Hey, good evening. How are you? How was your day? Hey, so those of you that are uh, jumping on, I appreciate you. Good evening. Thanks for uh, joining me here on Facebook Live or on Instagram Live. And uh, hi, Ernie. Welcome. It's good to see you uh, bouncing back and forth, man, from Facebook <laughs> or Instagram. I appreciate you and Eleanor and you know the whole family. How are you guys? Enjoying the, uh, I guess, uh, semi-cooler weather with uh, terrible air quality that we have right now. I hope everybody uh, is staying safe, uh, trying to stay indoors as much as you can. Um... You know, since, you know, we, it's not one thing or it's another, right? Cool. So uh, as people are joining on, I appreciate it. If you could uh, share uh, this message, it'd be great. Uh, you can hit watch party and share. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be talking about uh, Colossians chapter two. I'm going to touch on some things there and jump into a little bit of revelation. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, God's truth, sound, uh, the sound word versus what sounds like a like a good argument or sound judgment. And so, hey Sheila, thanks for uh, joining on on Instagram. I appreciate you. So again, I will be looking at you guys here, gals, and bouncing over here to Instagram. It's right next to me on this side. Um, so I appreciate it. Jess, what's up, man? Hey man, it's so good to. Uh, you know, catch up with you again, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for, uh, you know, sharing and thanks for being here this evening. Uh, thank you so much. So, um, yeah, um, enjoying the crazy weather, enjoying the, uh, not enjoying the crazy uh, air quality and trying to stay indoors as much as I can. But, you know, we got things to do also. And um, so hope you guys are all staying safe. And uh, the fall is near and here. Pretty much, and um, temperatures are probably going to start dipping. And uh, excited about this this year ending. <laughs> we'll still continue to pray. Uh, there's still a lot of this year left. Uh, we're remaining as optimistic and, and as positive as we can as we continue to pray for um, our city. You know, here in Palmdale and the Antelope Valley, we continue to pray for our state, the great state of California. And then we also pray, obviously, for our country and for the world. Um, you know, we need a lot of a lot of prayer. So uh, continue to pray. And uh, you know, as you guys know, you know the season for uh, voting is coming up as well. And so be in prayer for that. Now uh, the elections and um, so much more. And uh, um, as you guys probably heard, you know, there's a, a tragic event that happened. You know, two uh, sheriffs were were uh, shot, were ambushed, and uh, thankfully, by the grace of God, they're, uh, they're doing good. They, were, uh, they went through surgery, and uh, it was just amazing to see um, the 31-year-old female uh, basically help out her partner and then still call you know, for help, for backup, and, and just an amazing story. Uh, thank God that they're alive. So we're, you know, praying for law enforcement, all law enforcement, uh, hashtag blue lives matter, you know, uh, hashtag all lives matter. And so, you know, just uh, be in prayer for that as well. So there's a lot to be uh, praying for. Uh, we're praying as a church. Uh, you guys obviously uh, continue to pray. And um, speaking of prayer, let's start with prayer right now. And then we'll get into again, we're in the book of Colossians. I invite you to you know open your Bible or the Bible app if you have another device, uh, an iPad or uh, 
you know, it depends on where you're at. You know, maybe your, your phone, if you're not on your phone, that's great. Or if you have a physical Bible, like I do here right now, you know, I have a physical Bible, and you can turn to the book of Colossians in the New Testament. Pray with me, will you? Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for another, another day. We're grateful for uh, just your grace, your love, your mercy, and we're grateful for your word. Thank you for, um, you know, just inspiring, uh, for your inspirational word, your transformational word. We thank you for uh, the Bible, that it, uh, it's, it transforms us, that it uh, cuts us deep mentally, uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And Lord, that, uh, that it really helps us renew our minds and transforms us from the inside out. And Lord, uh, I just pray for every, everyone tuning in uh, that's tuned in now or will listen to this message maybe on replay uh, later on. Or right now, as we're jumping on, I pray for them. Thank you for uh, you know, giving them the nudge to jump on this evening. And I pray that you open their hearts and their minds, Lord, that you shut out all the white noise, all the craziness of the day, and, and give them peace right now that surpasses all understanding so that uh, they can hear your word, get into the word. And Lord, I pray that you uh, give me uh, wisdom and give me the right words to edify, to encourage, and to... Um, help my brothers and sisters that are tuning in right now to fall in love more and more with your word uh, so they can see how good it is, how transformational it is, and uh, God, how there's so many blessings uh, that are written in your word so that we can implement in our lives and see not just small change, but radical change in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, let me see some amens, some hearts and likes. You know how I like to have you participate with me. Hey, if you're tuning in, listen, participate, okay? Don't just sit there. And it's it's like if, you know, we're going to we're going to play pretend like you're at a actual uh building, which you probably are or maybe inside your car or maybe uh doing something, but you know, um I'd love to have you hit some likes and some hearts when I ask you or you know, if something comes to mind, type it in. It'd be great. Uh, instead of just seeing little eyeballs, you know, um, I'd love to see the chat or uh, the comment section actually light up and see you participate. Sounds cool? All right. Let me see some hearts and likes. Come on. Let's see those hearts. Yes. I see them on Instagram already. Um, seeing them on Facebook pop up. Great. Okay. So we're in Colossians chapter two. I'm going to read. And as I read, I'll uh, give you a little bit of context before we start. Hey, Brittany. Hey, Alice. Uh Again, uh, everyone tuning in, thank you so much. Appreciate it on Instagram as well. Thanks for being here. So Colossians chapter two. So um, we, in this book, again, we are reading a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote um, uh, on behalf of a church planter, a convert, someone that started a church in his home. And this person uh, heard the gospel of Jesus Christ through the Apostle Paul when he was in Ephesus, um, you know, uh, there and preaching the gospel. And the person believed, and the, so he traveled back home to the uh, city of Colossae and started a church. And people came to believe. People started congregating, getting together, breaking bread. Uh, as we read, you know, like like we read in book. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, 42, 47, people were in awe and wonder, and uh, people were gathering together, breaking bread, listening to, you know, the prophets, the apostles, uh, what they had to say, which was uh, preaching God's word, and then they would share everything in common together, and anybody that was in need, they would help one another out, and many, many came to believe. Now, this letter is written because Paul has heard from uh, his friend, this convert, that there has been some heresies now that are beginning to be preached, that are being taught, that is completely against what they had first been taught, which was through the Apostle Paul, that uh, Jesus is the Christ, he's the Messiah, that he is God, and that salvation is through Jesus, uh, Jesus only. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, we are in Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, Brittany. Got it. You got it. Um, sorry for the pounding. I, my kids are upstairs trying to fall asleep. So <laughs> It's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit right now is pounding. 
on the rooftop of my house. Can I get an amen? <laughs> no, it's my kids. It's my kids. But uh, anyway, so uh, what's going on here is this letter reaches all the way to another church, Laodicea. And in Laodicea, there's another church planted, but this is a wealthy church, okay? Uh, the Laodicean church was possibly another church that was started by another convert that the Apostle Paul uh, spread the news and somebody believed and, and they took the message back and, you know, started in their home. Uh, they started, you know, obviously, you know, uh, getting together and hearing the good news. And this city, Laodicea, is a wealthy city. Uh, there's a lot of commerce, there's a lot of trade, and um, later, you know, we read also in the book of Revelation, which we'll touch in Revelation chapter 3 right now in a little bit, I'll get into that, uh, Jesus actually criticizes this church in Revelation chapter 3 because the believers at Laodicea had become lukewarm. Um, you know, they're not hot, that means they're not on fire for the Lord, they're not uh, you know, telling people about Jesus, their lives are not uh, showing the radical transformation that Jesus can only do in a person's life. Uh, as you know, or maybe you've heard me say, is that when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know, the book uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 says that anyone that is in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. They are born again by the Spirit of the Spirit. And the old person is gone. The old person that you used to be in God's eyes through Jesus Christ, that person is gone and the new person is here. And so, um, you know, Paul basically wants this letter that's written to the church in Colossae to pass on to the next church in Laodicea. Because the same heresies that were being taught inside the church at Colossae are now being spread or have spread to the church in Laodicea. And so with all that said, um, again, there's false teachings that, that have spread and Paul is writing this letter. And, and I want to, you know, if you can read with me, we're going to start in Colossians chapter two, verse one. And like I said, I'll stop periodically to, you know, talk a little bit about, um, you know, what's going on, ask you some questions and we'll go from there. So uh, if you're there, Colossians chapter two, Paul says, I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge so remember what he what he's saying here is that there's this heresies these false teachers that are saying that there is this mysterious uh, knowledge that only a few people or only some people reach to understand and only those people are saved which is not true it's false the the true knowledge and treasure and riches are in Christ Jesus and this mystery has already been told you know, uh, Jesus came to let everyone know that he was here, that he is here, and that there is salvation through him. And then continue, I tell you this so that no one, listen to this, so that no one may deceive you by fine sounding arguments. In other words, somebody might say something that sounds really good and interesting to you, but if it's not what the Bible says, it may be a fine sounding argument, but it's not truth. So you have to be careful. You have to beware of you know of what, what you're looking at YouTube, what you're watching uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, TikTok, I mean, WhatsApp, all this stuff that's out there in social media. It may ring your ears nicely and it may sound good, but is it the truth? And is it God's word, all right? For though, this is Paul, for though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit. And again, he was locked up, he's in jail, he's in prison, writing this letter. And delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm you are, or how firm your faith in Christ is. In other words, despite you hearing all these sound 
find sound arguments out there that sound like God's word, will you stand will you stand firm in your faith? Or will you easily be deterred or sh- astray away from God's word? You know, we also read in God's word in other place that the path is narrow. The path is very narrow and and you can go astray because everything else leads you away from that fine narrow path that Jesus has set forth for us. Verse 6. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive. Listen to this. In other words, as a prisoner, right? Through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. What does he mean by that? Well, Paul is not condemning philosophy in itself, okay? He's condemning teaching and he's condemning uh, anything that credits humanity. In other words, you know, self, again, I talked a little bit about this last uh, Wednesday, anything that has to do with self, right? I did this, I created this, I attracted this into my life, uh, you know, I manifested this, you know, all, all of these things that have to do with self-idolatry, with self-fulfillment, uh, you know, with self-credit, you know, uh, with what we have in our lives. And so anything that has to do with self is the reason why we get into problems. See, that approach is a false religion. You guys hear me again, that type of approach or, you know, this law of attraction, so it's a false religion. It's a religion, no doubt. But again, what you're saying is you're becoming your little God, you know, you're becoming you know this this little god and why would you need god himself if if you've become this little god okay and so there are many man-made approaches to to life's problems that that totally disregard god and we need to be careful as believers in jesus that that we don't disregard god and and you know become self um uh what do you call it uh self-reliant okay and so we need to keep our eyes on Jesus and we need to we need to study God's word. All right, as we continue. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by christ what does that mean well in the old testament you know babies were actually physically circumcised okay you know by the eighth day and so that was a law a tradition of faith of jews that demonstrated that that child was basically consecrated in other words set aside uh for for the work of God, you know, to, to be a follower of God himself. But it says here that, you know, we were ruled at one time by ourselves. In other words, you know, no one told us what to do. We, we didn't like people telling us what to do. We didn't like to submit to authority. Um, you know, we, we made our own rules. We had, we made, we created our own moral, uh, understanding and whatever was, black and white turned into gray you know it was like we created our own rules and it was whatever i said was right was right and whatever was wrong was wrong and it was always what benefited us and so through christ it says in him you were also circumcised with a circumcision performed not by human hands and so when you become a follower of jesus okay you accept jesus christ as your lord and savior you are now basically circumcised that in other words like i said earlier in second corinthians 5 17 that old person through the eyes of jesus has been completely gone it's completely taken away and you are born again you are given a new life okay so uh the full power and presence of god now lives inside of you 
through his spirit. Do you hear me? God's presence and his full power now takes up residence in your heart and in your mind, okay? And uh, your heart and your mind, and you are a new person that is now equipped, that is now equipped for life and should be satisfied and satisfied in God through Christ Jesus. Can I get an amen to that? Okay, so some hearts and some likes. And, and so I want you to understand that anything other than that, anything that you believe that it's by your works, that you have to earn your salvation, uh, no matter if your feelings tell you, well, you know, you've been bad today, so, you know, I think you lost your salvation, and I don't think, you know, God loves you, and blah, blah, that, that's all lies from the enemy, and those are, those are false beliefs. And so we got to rebuke those in the name of Jesus, and you have to meditate, right, which is repeat and continue to tell yourself, I have been bought by the blood of Jesus. I have been circumcised, and not by human hands, but through the price that God, that Jesus, Jesus paid on the cross with his bloodshed and his body. That and I've been bought at that price, and I am I come from a lineage, you know, which is a lineage of a priesthood, a royal priesthood. You know, I, I, I'm a son or I'm a daughter of the king of kings. And so I want you to know, yes, circumcised, yeah, circumcised from sin in life. That's right, in our lives. Amen. And so you gotta believe that. And then Paul continues and he says in verse 12. Uh, you have having been buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And so the scriptures tell us that Jesus was, was murdered on Calvary on a cross. And on the third day, he was raised by the spirit of God and he is seated at the right hand of the father. And so what this is saying is that for those of us that believe in Jesus, and, and, and then take the step forward, the next step of our faith and get baptized, that symbolizes ourselves basically going through the same thing. You know, when we go under the water in complete immersion, right, that is dying to ourselves and leaving the old person, right, all of our sins underneath that water and coming up in new life in Christ, on the opposite side, on the other side, when you come out, you come out with a new life, okay? And so through faith in the working of God, nothing that we've done, okay? There's nothing that we can do on our part other than surrendering our lives to Jesus and saying, Jesus, I need you. I've sinned against you, and I believe that you are the Son of God. You are sinless, and I want you as my Lord and Savior and I receive you today. You do that. You say that. You know, again, the scripture says in Romans 10, 9, Romans 10, 9, for those that confess with their mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in their hearts that God raised him, who? Jesus from the dead, they will be saved. Verse 13, when you were dead in your sins, Paul says, and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Isn't that powerful? And having disarmed the powers, listen to this, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Now, what's powerful about what Paul just said, I'm gonna read that again. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public, Jesus made a public spectacle of them, of who, of, of these powers and authorities. What are these powers? Well, there's spiritual, we are, we are battling against a spiritual realm. There are spiritual authorities that are coming against us as followers and believers in Jesus Christ, as children of God, as sons and daughters of Jesus that don't like us. Why? Because since the beginning, we know that Satan has a plan and that plan is to win souls for his kingdom as well, to deter us from the plan of God, which is eternal, which is salvation and eternal life with him. And he wants us to be damned. And so Satan hates God 
and everything that has been ordained by God. That means marriage. Satan hates marriage and he'll come against your marriage. He'll come against your children. He'll come against uh, your job, your business, relationships, whatever it is to shake things up, to shake up your faith so that you will fall away from God. And so part of that is what I've been saying here is that we have to be careful with, uh, you know, being deceived by lies, okay, that are masquerading as fine <laughs> sounding arguments. And so what are those? Well, there's many of them, okay? Falling into the trap of, you know, of so many things of this world. You know, we can get into, you know, uh, which you guys know already what I'm talking about. You know, it's, you know, this movement, that movement, uh, getting into, you know, this political party, that, when we start seeing things, hear me out, please. When you start seeing things through the lens of anything else, then seeing it through the lens of God's word, through Jesus Christ, you have fallen into the lies of sound, sound, fine sounding arguments. Sure, you can win an argument, but do you win an, win an argument or do you want to win a soul into God's kingdom? Woo! Come on. Do you want to win an argument and be right? <clears throat> or do you win, do you want to win someone new into the kingdom of God? That's a great question. Because if you are more interested in being right and winning an argument, especially through a keyboard on Facebook, on Instagram, or on text message, whatever platform, something has led you astray. And so I wanna challenge you and encourage you that as believers in Jesus Christ, we need to be careful, okay? That, that we don't fall into <clears throat> the rules of this world because we're not of this world. You are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You are to be different. You, an ambassador is somebody that is representing a kingdom, right? A, a different location, a different place. And so you don't belong to this world anymore. Be, you know, you're part of this world, but you don't belong to it. You are, you have accepted the call, predestined to say, hey, I'm a follower, a believer of Jesus. And I represent God's kingdom, which is not of this world. And so as ambassadors of Jesus, we need to not act like the world, not fall into the traps of this world, the arguments of this world, fine sound arguments, judgments of this world. We need to act accordingly, act like our heavenly father that we had this perfect example through Jesus Christ who incarnate, embodied the full deity of God here on earth <clears throat> and led by example, he loved children, women, <clears throat> people of different color, different nations, different, that spoke different tongues, people that uh, there was so much beef, so much struggle between the Samaritans and the Jews and he had a great encounter with a Samaritan woman you read that in John chapter four. And she had so many arguments against why he was there and why she, why he shouldn't be asking her for, you know, some water and, and you know, talking about religion, bringing and, and Jesus deflected all that and said, no, 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 no. Listen, listen, if you knew who was asking you for water, you would stop and ask me for water. Why? Because We'll grow, thirst, we'll grow thirsty. Every single one of us will grow thirsty if we continue to seek <clears throat> the things of this world to try to quench our thirst. Whether that's, we think politics, a political party, or a, 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 a candidate is gonna fulfill all of, our, all of our needs, all of our wants, all of our desires. If we believe that, um, you know, anything other than Jesus feeling and completely Filling us up is going to complete us, 
and fulfill us 100%. And so I need you to understand that right now, as you're hearing me, there is a battle going on in your mind right now and in your heart and maybe even next to people that you're having a conversation with and, and it's a real spiritual battle. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in who? In Christ. Verse 18, do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. And so these people are worshiping all kinds of different things, including angels. All right, they're worshiping anything and everything, including angels. And we're not supposed to do that. The only person that we're supposed to worship is Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen, some hearts and some likes? Okay, uh, we need to worship the Lord. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual minds. They have lost connection with the head from who the whole body supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows as God causes it to grow. Verse 20, since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why? As though you still belong to the world, why do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, they say, do not taste, do not touch. These rules, Paul says, which have to do with things that are all destined to what? To perish, to die, to fade away, with use are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom. That means they look like, wow, what? Such disciplined people, right? Man, you know, they look really religious. Boo-hoo. He says, with their self-imposed worship, in other words, they like being idolized themselves because, you know, they're good at, you know, doing all these religious acts. Their false humility and their harsh treatment of the body, that means they discipline their bodies right to to not fall into temptation or to be super disciplined to for people to look at them like they're holier than holier but paul says they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence again back to the self self fulfillment self gratification right the self uh puffing up all right all this it goes back to the self so let me go back and ask you a question all right Amen. Our Heavenly Father, God. Amen. Let me ask you a question. How do you guard yourself against being deceived by lies that are masquerading as fine, sound arguments? Again, how do you? How do you guard yourself <clears throat> against being deceived by lies that are masquerading as fine, sound sounding arguments how come on post it there how see there ha there has to be as i close here and i wrap up i wanted to make this short but i wanted to get you thinking how is it that you don't fall into these things well very simple okay is you have to have a relationship and be unified with christ jesus and how do you do that very simply, is you need to spend time in God's word. Spending time with him, you know, in John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word is God. And so when you spend time with God and, and through the Holy Spirit, God will talk to you and will give you revelation, will reveal some things to you. It's amazing how <clears throat> to this day, when I open the word, when I open God's word, the Bible, he speaks to me. One way to speak to God is praying, right? Speaking to him. But what about listening and hearing him? How does he speak to you? And that's by reading the scriptures. And so as you do this and you're listening to me right now, this is good, right? 
You're, you're hearing what has God revealed to me to give to you, but that's revelation that he's given me through the Holy Spirit. And the same spirit that's alive in me is alive inside of you. And God wants to speak to you also. And he'll reveal some things to you that maybe have set in your mind. <clears throat> Let me drink some water. Let me wet my whistle. <sighs> Fresh water. <clears throat> there may be some things in your mind that need to be shaken up. There may be some, like I've been saying here, there may be some lies, some deceptions in your mind and your heart that have been guiding your life <clears throat> to this day. And they're masquerading as, as fine sounding arguments, maybe as even truth, maybe as moral truths in your life. And you know what God has done in my life? Just to give you a little quick testimony. God has stirred some things in my life over the years that I believed as truth, that I believed as this is, this is morally right. This is what I believe. And, and, and God revealed these things that were in my heart and my mind that I had to deal with. And I, I had to work on those things. There's some things that still linger. Listen, none of us are perfect. And like I always say, none of us are sinless, though through the spirit of God, we do sin less. Hope you always remember that. And if you're in God's word and you're renewing your mind, God will reveal some things to you through his spirit that you need to let go of, that you need to surrender to him, that you need to say, God, this is what I am struggling with. Um, I struggle, for example, you could say, I struggle with uh, you know, being prejudiced, with racism. Uh, I struggle with people that vote differently than I do, that think differently than I do that was welcome to the human race, right? Uh, you know, and, and instead of having a sound argument with somebody, you immediately get puffed up, you immediately shut them off, uh, you immediately call them idiots or because they think differently than you do. Instead of being loving and, and maybe understanding their position or their point of view, we immediately shut them out and we even unfriend them and call them all kinds of names and, and I'll create all kinds of craziness. And that is, that is not the way Jesus treated others that obviously were different than he was. He didn't treat me and you this way. The, the scripture says that though we were still sinners, while we were still sinners, he died for us. Sin separates us from God. And yet he sent his one and only begotten son, Jesus to die for you, for me. Many of us forget that. And we're quick to judge, quick to immediately, uh, you know, be so desensitized. And also we, we dehumanize people because they look different than us. Their tone, you know, is wider, is darker. Uh, they live in a lower demographic, they're poor, they're rich, whatever it is, right? Uh, they're rolling around with a Trump 2020 flag or, or a Biden you know, flag, or there's donkeys versus elephants, uh, the independence. There's all, immediately, it's us versus them. When we, listen to me, please, when we, as the church, need to lead by example and love people right where they are, right where they are and not get into arguments, but win them over, win them over by sharing love, joy, peace, patience, forbearance, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, and asking the Holy Spirit to give us self control, self-control of this typing away right away and self-control of what we say from our mouths. And so again, I want to encourage you to be careful that you've fallen into deceptions and lies, deceiving lies that are masquerading as fine sounding arguments. Finally, again, my question to you is, do you want to win an argument 
and be right, which some of you are phenomenal, I guarantee you, at winning arguments. And sure, you can drive a point, drive a point, and drive a point and win that argument. But then you lose your testimony. You lose an opportunity to share the love of Jesus with that person, with that human being, with that person that Jesus died for also. Jesus didn't die for the Republican Party. Jesus didn't die for the Democratic Party. Jesus didn't die for Black Lives Matter. Jesus didn't die for Blue Lives Matter. Jesus died for the world. Jesus died for everyone. You guys hear me? Hello, hearts and likes out there. Jesus died for your neighbor. Jesus died for everyone. Even though they don't look like you, they don't speak like you, they don't dress like you, they don't vote like you, he died for them too. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. He died for your boss too. <laughs> and so we need to pray. We need to stay prayed up. We need to be in God's word so we don't fall into these traps. And, and we need to pray for our city. We need to pray for our, our state. We need to pray for our country. We need to pray for our leadership. Even those that are not in our political party, whatever that is, we need to, we need to pray because they need God's wisdom, discernment. They need God's leadership. Period. Pray with me, will you? Pray. God in heaven, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that we have wisdom sitting at, 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 at literally in our hands, whether that's through the YouVersion Bible app uh, or a physical Bible. God, your word cuts through bone and marrow. It's a double-edged sword. And I pray tonight, that through your word, Heavenly Father, that we can find spiritual fullness, that we know that we are complete in Christ Jesus, your son, and that every power and authority is given to you. And Lord, that we have been circumcised from the old person that we used to be, that we are made new, and that now we're underneath your rulership. We are ambassadors and we are representatives of yours may we do a fine job of representing you to this broken and fallen world that picks us versus them and division lord help us to be more unified as christians as the body your church you are the head of it may we stay focused on you as things get darker and gloomier we have hope in you lord jesus we have everything that we need. May we not go astray. And when we do, God, when we do fall short, and, and Lord, may we repent, ask you for forgiveness, knowing that, God, we have complete forgiveness through the bloodshed and broken body on Calvary that you, that you submitted to that dreadful uh, pain and death that we rightfully deserved ourselves, but you took our position. And when we lock eyes with somebody, Lord, that irritates us, that, that gets us angry because they're different than us, they vote different, they, they post something, where, Lord, help us to remember that you love them in spite and despite of what they believe. Lord, because we all are sinners and we all fall short of your glory. But we're grateful that we have salvation, that we are made new. And so help us to win people over to your kingdom, for your kingdom's sake. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Um, if this blessed you, share it. Um, also, I want to invite you to come back on Sunday. Uh, you can tune in on Facebook Live. And those of you that are Instagram, uh, check out The Well of AV. And also, we have a new platform. It's thewellofav.online.church. You can uh, see our live services, and uh, it's at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 8 p.m. And we're having fun. I want you to know we're going through a new series called Relationship Goals. Uh, we're having so much fun with it. Uh, last week, we talked about having a Christ-centered relationship. This week, I'm going to talk about uh, 
uh, how to be mission driven in your marriage and singles guess what this is for you as well because one day i know you want to you're going to want to have a christ centered you know mission driven uh devil you know beating up winning your spiritual battles covenant keeping relationship and, and you got to start living that way today so that god can bless you with uh, a spouse that you can align yourself with and so again we're talking about again relationship goals this this weekend and the next two weekends so it's a four-part series don't miss it and if you did miss it go to our youtube channel you can check out last week's service there the well of av catch up and look forward to seeing you this sunday all right god bless you we'll talk to you guys later thanks for again tuning in